something really well. Power. Honestly, what else do you it's need? Very SMG. ZZ Hunter shotgun. That ain't XX. Yeah, so I'm not that kind of too you sad. I'm just contacting it. That sounds actually really good. Uh, I'm gonna say flipper. Keeping that terrible shotgun. From this lady finger. Keeping this double fury. Solid sniper can go. The burning sniper can go. The distant sniper can't go. So an idiot. That's on market. And PMS, uh, cheap SMG can go. So some Merv, I'll probably equip. No, I'll get rid of that. That's actually kind of bad. Um, I'll do Betty. Keep. Shield. Go. Contact. There we go. Alright. Um, you also have a skill point. So I'm going to put that into, uh, as you know, rapid reload. Or, no, I'll do it down. Oh yeah, we have to use the bounty board. This is how we get multi side quests. Um, so what we'll be doing is... Hey, you the one killing all the crap when people ask me? To catch a ride near Firestone is more busted than my mama's girl parts. Real appreciate you taking a poke at that. Uh, the system, not my mom. Huh. That dog down scared, Dan, you know what I'm saying? So, what we'll be doing is getting a quick diagnostic. Real quick. That mission is going to be tough, so I'm going to go get to level 10 before I Because all the enemies are 12, and unless I intentionally glitch the game, I'm not going to be able to do it. So we're going to do TK, TK has more work. Even at level 9, it's still going to be a very difficult mission to complete. Hey newcomer, I've been looking for you. Scar, and then I'll proceed to go on the lore of TK Baja and Brick. That way, you get a little bit of juicy lore, and you guys get to enjoy me spilling and squealing. Egg with one of the skags. 
Oh, uh, one of those guys was literally named after, I think, a Stranger Things reference. It was a weapon. Sometimes it feels like I'm not shooting them right. Because I'm hitting them, they just don't die. I'll hit them with four, like, I'll hit them right in the face, too, with crit. Well, obviously, Lake, the informant that originally negotiated the deal, didn't like it what he got from his higher ups. So he was being fair and gave TK Baja a chance to leave with his life intact. And he left his home planet all the way down to Pandora with his wife. Sadly, during his time in Pandora, a feral skag by the name of Scar, as we saw, managed to kill his wife and take him down by his leg and claw out his eyes. So that's why he's blind and can only use rolling his shotgun to defend himself. If he does try to walk, it's going to be a lot harder for him to actually actively walk. So he has to kind of walk and rest and that's it. So he's kind of left boned in Pandora, which is a terrible kind of situation. But in a way, this is kind of his whole backstory and why we help him. Um, hey, newcomer. I've been looking for you. And how he helped Thanks. us is, of course, our very special for example, his shotgun. TK's wife. Which I personally, and I'm, I'm not going to throw shade at TK, but at the same time, I'm going to. I don't like his shotgun. His shotgun is not exactly the best weapon to use. And the only reason why I say this is not out of hate towards him as a craftsman, but his weapon pattern is completely sporadic and does high damage. But you can play all your shots, and you have to wait for them to exit. Versus other Baja weapons I have, which is Baja's bigger blaster, I just need to shoot the target. And the target's dead. 
And that's not Danny on him, he also made the Lady Finger and the Lady Fist two of some of the best firearms in the game, actually. I would even argue that the Lady Finger and the Lady Fist are some of the most common picks early and to end game. Now, Lady Finger, you can't really use that anymore. But the Lady Fist, its high critical chance, is such a good option for a swap weapon or a merge weapon in Borderlands 2. So a lot of people tended to use that, and this gun was mainly made by TK Baja's family. So TK Baja is basically a guy you don't really want to mess with, and he is an interesting character. I think for the short time he did run, he was a w wonderful character with light of charm and an interesting story you wanted to you know learn about. Of course, you have to find that out in other games, and also have to find it out in echo logs and. And just reading up on stuff. By aiming your crosshairs at an enemy, your HUD can display your target's muzzle, health, and chill streak. The higher level an enemy, the more dangerous they will be. If you see a skull, you better get out of there fast. Now, I got this. I got an achievement because I didn't originally get the achievement. It was bugged. Um, there's actually a funny little glitch I'm about to show here. When I back out of this menu, I'm going to experience what's called the super speed glitch. Every character in this game has a glitch or bug related towards their special ability that gives them movement tech. Mordecai, I think, is the only character, but his natural jump height with the grenade is insane. But Roland has the super jump with his grenade. Brick has the berserk rush when you intentionally pop a berserk and go into your menu and back out. It usually triggers it and you always have a guaranteed movement speed buff. And Lilith has the phase jump. It's basically as soon as phase shift ends, you can jump and it'll send you out further. It's very tricky, it's very hard. I've tried a million times and I still haven't been able to do it. But it's something pros do a lot and it gets them far. But now, uh, what you wanna do, when you wanna do the glitch is you gotta get the, you gotta get the berserk First, when you get the Berserk, you want to go up to your, um, you want to pop it, go to your inventory, instantly cancel, and you should instantly lose the Berserk, but you're guaranteed the movement speed. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, we are going to go to Kill Skies, and... Then we'll probably learn more on those uh, bandits and why they're here after we get these uh, blade flower seeds. Because um, I plan on knocking both these quests out. Oh, yeah. And then I'll be able to do the bonehead theft after I get both these quests, hopefully. So that's the plan. At least. So pretty much this is kind of what the gist of this game was. It's a big looter shooter back in the time, and it's also like a more of an MMORPG type of game where you have a lot of quests you can do. It's not, of course, MMO, but it's like a lot of like different quests, and some can be fetch quests, some can be grindy quests. Some are good, some are bad. I mean, it's just there. And that's kind of one thing is you don't have to do all the side missions to complete the story. It'll help you because you get so much more gear and so much more loot and things, but you don't have to do every single one of them. You're not restricted to that type of experience. And um, I think that's wonderful about these games is you're um, given the ability to not just have to be stuck to one specific playstyle and focus on side missions. The next minute you can do like. Purely grinding out levels, and the next thing you grind it for chests, and you're doing a certain path that gives the most amount of XP while grinding for those chests. Um, 
So yeah, uh, we got all of the um, things we need. The blade power is here. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just um, run over to the next audio look. So we're gonna go actually set that quest up. Why are they here? And figure out about the things and what their meaning is. Uh, I'm gonna just read through this. Yeah. I'm going to find some data recorders, and these data recorders are going to give us valuable deets on what the bandits are doing here and who the bandit group is. And I may even go a little bit into that, but I can't really too much because we haven't gotten to Sledge yet, which is the main um, lore it would be Sledge, but it's Sledge. And also, of course, this would go delve into the bandits and the main, I'd say, the four factions of bandits and sisters. Shotgun and revolver proficiency. I did say in the quest log that these are beat up recorders. So there's a high chance that these first two logs are gonna sound like complete gargle goop. Um it's the last one, then see what it is. I'll tell you one thing I like about this game. Um, is the... This is one of those games that really I feel like capitalized on an apocalyptic feel, like a unique style. Just kind of like how Fallout and Mad Max did their own thing. I think this game also kind of just did its own good post-apocalyptic style. So, they're too beat up to understand, I guess. I'm gonna bring them in, and it's probably gonna like tell me that there's literally nothing to understand from these tapes, which will be true, but I think that's kind of um cop out there, but I guess I get that there was something that originally these factions we're here for. Obviously bandits are bandits, so they're more just focused on turf and claiming for resources, but still. Really gotta do like a... I wonder if I should get the Berserk Speed Glitch to be done perfect. But uh, I'll take some time so I'll be able to do that. Change your outfit a bit. Why not? There we go. For the lulls. Of course, I don't have third person, so I can't really show you the outfit, but yeah. That's my style right now. That is my style. Of 
course, I can go over to TK Baja, get that quest done. I can also go to um, the bounty board to get this quest turned in, which I want to do. Um, this is a little bit more of a blind side quest. I never really did this one, so I don't really understand. data from the three recorders, you've managed to reconstruct the message. You slugs want to join Sludge, Sludge's tribe. Fine. Set up a camp in Skag Gully. I want those Firestoners pissing their pants. It sounds like the Sludge is a real threat. Hmm. Well then. Damn. He's an interesting feller. Fatal shock. Oh, that's, that's good. Rubberize. I'm gonna equip that shotgun now, actually. And now, I guess I don't have to equip that. I'm probably gonna equip. Oh, I'm gonna equip the rocket launcher. Sweet! Alright, rocket launcher. Shotgun scope's not bad. Let's go. And it's a wide off, too, so that means that I got a pretty good. Oh. Maybe not. Oh, it's good damage, just terrible fire rate. Oh, I just shoot all the missiles. That's good. I ain't gonna lie. Turning these blade flower seeds. Hey, why don't you come over here and chat a while? Always nice for. Got a sniper rifle. A fellow to have company out here. <gasps> now we should be able to fight Bonehead. First thing I'm gonna do is punch him. And I'm gonna punch him. <gasps> but all uh, punching jokes aside. Pretty much, Brick is the good guy for like explosives. That's his like, that's like a common pick when people build Brick. They usually go for Master Blaster, which is what I'm gonna be going for right now. Um, I'm just gonna be going focused on explosives and getting the Blaster Skill Tree maxed as soon as possible. And once I get Master Blaster, it's game over. Hybrid? I want to see. Nope. But it's a. Oh, it's not a double AMP, but it, it's in this. What's the one? What's the one? That's it. I'll tell you what, the boss weapons are always going to be good, no matter what. 
because certain boss weapons just do so much damage and it's rewarding. Definitely getting on to the second part, or the, um, fifth part of the game. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to, in post, use this little bit of time to say part five in order to make sure my person. Is 